Flint's new music leader. We are at Club 93 is 7. What's going on? It's Artemis 81 show talking about local artists and Flint and the surrounding areas, uh, showcasing their talents. And uh, we got Dune Machete in the building. What's going on, man? What's good with it? Right from uh, Eagle Life Entertainment. Uh, first of all, it, how many members are in Eagle Life Entertainment? Because there seems to be a lot of y'all, man. <laughs> uh, we call it entourage or rappers. Uh, let's just say rappers. Uh, rappers, we got five. 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 Okay. And uh, go ahead and shout them out. Uh, we got uh, Eagle Life Duke. Eagle Life Kush Mac, Eagle Life Green, Eagle Life Money M Money Mitch. Yeah, be in there too. Uh, and then we got Yola Av. Okay. Yeah. And how did that whole Eagle Life movement start? Uh, actually, uh, this was about two, maybe three years ago. Okay. We were doing our own thing. Actually, we just teamed up with uh, some guys from the uh, neighborhood. We was all on the same side. Okay. So we was like, we all chasing the same dream. So we just teamed up. Right. You know what I'm saying? And pushed it all together and. That was just actually the first thing we had some paperwork on, actually. So we okay. ran with it. And it was a nice whole name, so we just stuck with it. And now, what side of Flint? North side, North side. North side. North side. And so you guys turned this into a brand. I mean, this yep. is something to where, like, you know, I mean, there's a couple different, you know, groups in Flint, but I hear a lot about Eagle Life. Uh, who was the founder of it? I mean, obviously, you know, you guys got, you know, a whole bunch of people in your entourage and everything. You got five right. rappers, but who really, you know, uh, jump started it all? Uh, Nero. Narrow. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And let's talk about your career, man. When did you get started with this rap thing? Uh, what were your influences? Uh, I mean, obviously, coming from Flint, you got enough surroundings around you and enough people that right, could influence right. you. But how did it all get started? Uh, actually, man, I was going through a tough time. I lost my pops. Okay. And I was a very outspoken person. Mm -hmm. So I lost a lot of ways to talk and everything and express my feelings. Right. And then actually, um, I was what, about 19, and Z put me on my first track. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I just really was just in the love with the hobby. Then, but last year, the year and a half is when I really took it serious. Okay. Because I had my own studio at the house, and I had so much music then, uh, one of my guys was like, man, you might as well put a tape out. I'm like, you really think I should? You know, just... Just building myself as an artist. Mm -hmm. So about two, about two and a half years, I really a and myself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Figure out where I was comfortable with and what I wanted to run with. And then I came, came up with the conclusion like, Flint got enough trap rappers, enough gangster rappers. So I'm like, fuck it. I make party music. I'm gonna be a turn up artist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause it, it ain't nobody really giving good vibes off the music. Right. It's just all about just telling a story. Mm -hmm. So really, I'm like, I'm gonna make some party music. I got the voice for it. Makes you wanna turn up. So I'm gonna go ahead and that's gonna be my lane right there. And I've just been pushing ever since. Okay. So you go. You're almost in a different lane compared to most, you know, street Flint rappers, like you said. Yeah. Like I mean, you look at the majority of rappers in Flint. They're rapping really about their surroundings, you know, and, and what they came up from, and especially on the north side where, you know, right. it could get real rough around there. So it, what made you decide, like, was it just the oversaturation <coughs> of street music in Flint that you wanted to go into your own lane and make, you know, party music and turn up music? Um, actually, what made me go ahead and do, do that was in our group we got multiple styles, mm -hmm. like, all of us just not as trap rappers and everything. Like, that's how we got Money Mitch. He's a battle rapper. Yeah. And then everything like that. So I'm like, well, how can I make us a full group? Yeah. And then that's what I really ran with it, came from. Then did it like that. So what was your first tape that was released then? Uh, actually, my first tape actually about to come out in July. Okay. Yeah, July and is 19. that the Hood Dreams one? No, that's actually the album. That would be dropped okay. in 2017. Okay. But right now I'm working over just mixtapes, giving them the streets what they want right now. So we so, got two turn for TV coming up July 19th. Make sure you go and get it off the muscle industry right now. Okay. So uh, with your experience in the rap game and everything, and, I, and something caught my attention when you said that you had to A&R yourself, how important to you is it to promote yourself and put yourself out there? Because I feel like anyone with... A dude who's got a beat machine or, you know, an 808 can, can come up with music. Right. What makes you different from, from every other Flint artist? Makes me different. I'm not afraid to be myself. Mm -hmm. I think that's what, I'm not afraid. I you know what I'm saying? I live it up to me. That's what, what really makes me different, man, is just me doing my thing, man. And once you sit there and listen and get, catch my vibes and you will see. 
Okay. Okay, yeah, he, he's a different breed right there. Yeah. Genuine dude. So you got the mixtape coming out in, in June or July? July. July. What's July. the date on that? 19. And the title of it? Two Turn for TV. Two Turn for TV. And yeah. then in 2017, you got an actual album coming out. Yep, Hood Dreams, the album. Okay. Now with Hood Dreams, are you uh, are you under a label or are you just by yourself? Or, or how's uh, that work out? Uh-uh, I'm under Eagle Life Entertainment. Okay, so, yep. so you're going branching off, you know, off of Eagle Life then, correct? Yep. Yep. Okay, so it, when you look at that, it, I mean, a lot of artists here in Flint want to want to get on a huge label and they want to get through, you know, through all these major labels, and it ends up a lot of times it ends up hurting the artist more than helping them. Right. Does it, does it help in your situation where you have you know a label within itself right there with Eagle Life, to where it's right in Flint and it's something to where you know the people where your music is going to? Yeah, yeah, of course. I feel like it's better, especially in the time we in right now, because. No, like people ain't really buying albums and right. all stuff like that. It's really like single work. So, and depending on the way to go right now, I'm not really looking into no big deal. Right. No, if anything, we're looking for a partnership. Okay. We ain't looking for no deals. Okay. So you could see something to where Eagle Life could partner up with another label and maybe do distribution or something like that. But oh, as yeah. far as as far as you signing on to a huge label, that's not something that you're really interested no, in. No, right? I'm not really into it. Okay. Because really, like, what makes me not into it? I could be putting in so much work right now, getting my name, getting my buzz right, mm -hmm. and then I go to another pond. I'm not that big fish no more. Right. So now I gotta swim. Yeah. So. My taping and my albums, it might be done, but the label might not feel it's ready just yet. So I don't, really don't want to be pushed back and held back because I feel like that's how a lot of artists lose their deals. Yeah, and a lot of artists, they end up signing with a label and then they don't come out with something for two or three years and the next thing you know, you're irrelevant, you yeah. know? So, I mean, it's important It's important that you got a label that's independently owned right here in Flint with Eagle Life. As far as uh, plans for the summer, man, you got the mixtape dropping. Any plans to tour around the city, maybe do some out-of-state shows? Oh, yeah, we always looking to uh, do out-of-towns out right now. We're actually looking into that right now because we, we rocking out the city right now. We've been rocking out the city. So it's time to branch off and do some bigger things, you know. And one last thing, who are your biggest influences in Flint? Like, either either growing up or looking at it now, like, who do you look at now in the Flint rap game and you're like, damn, like, they're really doing something? Um, <laughs> uh, like, far as influence? Yeah. I'm going to break it down to two. I can see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know who I feel like doing their thing and I admire their work, and then I'm going to tell you who influenced me. Influence-wise, of course, Dayton Family, mm -hmm. MC Breed, uh, Modern Day Monsters. From Merle Hood, yeah. That's who got me going. My favorite, all time favorite Flint rapper had to be Ray Ace. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he the one made me feel like I need to hit that booth. Because he actually had a uh, studio around the corner from me. He did everything itself mixed, engineer made his beats, all that. Okay. So if people want to check out your music, man, uh, go ahead and plug your Twitter, your Facebook, SoundCloud, all that. Facebook and uh, Snapchat, Eagle Life, Doom Machete. Uh, my Instagram, Doom Machete 20. Twitter, Doom underscore Machete. And you can spell Machete with one T, not two. Okay. Yo. Awesome. Doom Machete 8-1 is show. Uh, Eagle Life Entertainment in the building. Appreciate you coming through, man. No problem.